Welcome to the Cougar Tailgate, where BYU fandom lives. Here's your hosts, Sydney Carlson and Cole Wissinger. Good afternoon, uh, sort of, Cougar fans. My name is Cole <laughs> Wissinger, and that over there is Sydney Carlson. It's afternoon when you're listening to this, maybe, unless you're a podcasting kind of guy or gal, but it's a Thursday evening as we record right now. We want to make that clear because as we talk about the events of the week sports-wise, they might have changed yeah. uh, by the time you listen to this. <laughs> yeah, Thursday Eve, uh, on or the eve of the end of the world, it feels like, but <laughs> we are uh, The end of the world here. seemed like it happened, <laughs> and then we came out the other Maybe by the time the you listen side. to this, the world has already ended. We don't know. Man, we're just, we're prepared, though. Yeah, Like, in case ready. there is a world on Saturday for radio <laughs> waves to be we're processed We're here for through. you, dear listener. That's right. Um... Thursday, as of, you know, right now, it has been three days since BYU played St. Mary's in the WCC tournament. That was a different world three days ago. An absolutely different world. I have no concept of time. I mean, so much has happened since that game, and so much has seemingly made that game a little irrelevant, which is yep. good and bad. <laughs> I mean, who that seemed, you know, back in a time when the end of the world was a joke, that yeah. seemed like the end of the world. The yeah. BYU only puts up 50 and that you lose in that fashion. Yep. And oh no, what kind of seeding is BYU? You know, the unimportant questions now. Seeding was the most important question to me three days ago. Uh, not anymore because there's no NCAA tournament this year. Wow, wow. For the first wow. time ever, ever, right? Ever, I believe. Who knows? Who knows when it started? Probably people that would have prepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> There's the thing you don't cancel the yeah. you don't cancel anything every and yet everything is. I that was to me the real moment where I started to feel the gravity of this. I will say up into up until about noon yesterday, I was like everyone needs to calm down. This yeah. is getting insane. Um, I was supposed to fly to Orlando this weekend, and the conference that I was flying out for got canceled, and so I was feeling really bitter about it. And then it wasn't until yesterday when they announced that the NBA – well, first it was the NCAA tournament will not have fans, fans in and attendance. And so you're joking around still right. at this point. Like the, the My favorite tweet of that was, instead of having no fans, we just have one fan for each team, <laughs> and then they can yell across <laughs> the court at each other, which seems like – tons of fun it has been yes and but that was the first moment that i was like okay this thing feels a little serious because the amount of money that's on the line with that and then when the nba hit came like there's so much money in these institutions that to just shut it down that's when you know that there's some serious decision making happening and since then there's been some like bizarrely apocalyptic scenes like this morning we had ESPN up and they were showing the ACC conference tournament. Yes. And you had Florida State on the floor. Nobody's in the stands. And they decided, you know what, we're not going to play, but we're going to hand because Florida State was the number one seed, they win by default. Mm -hmm. And they had a whole trophy, like trophy oh, presentation. Weird. Nobody's in the stands. The Like the players are like, this is weird. Like it felt so bizarre. Like so I'm a Big Ten kind of guy. I come from the land of Penn State and, and other sorts of sports back there. I'm into wrestling and everything. But uh, Nebraska was playing in their game last night, and their coach looked like he was deathly ill of something. And we're all like so attuned to that that the news that guess what? He just had the flu. Like it was <laughs> not coronavirus. But you just expect it everywhere. And so to see him just kind of like hacking Ugh. up a lung on the sideline. If anyone's hacking anywhere, it's the panic. Yeah. And it just, watching that scene, I just, like, uh, it reminded me of, like, if anybody came, if anybody came in and just started watching sports and weren't, weren't like, you weren't really tuned in to what was going on. It's like that scene in Avengers Endgame where Paul Rudd comes through and he's like, what <laughs> happened here? You know, <laughs> like, that feels like that everywhere. Just, like, there's, like, a weird vibe around, and I didn't imagine that it was going to be the sports world that kind of kicked this all off, but it feels like the NBA deciding to shut down. Which and then and here in Utah specifically, I was getting deal. ready to watch the Jazz Thunder game. <laughs> right. they, that was the first game of the season. I went to see Jazz Thunder and Vivint. You know what seems like a hundred years ago when the basketball season actually started. But you know, I was just sitting down, ready to stream it. You know, following the tweets. Oh, they're postponing the game. They want to mm -hmm. check some things out. 
oh, Rudy Gobert and Emmanuel Moutier are out with an illness. <laughs> an undefined oh, illness. <laughs> the uh, doctors are on the court running across at the refs saying, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Everyone's ushered back into the locker rooms. We're not playing tonight. We're not playing for the rest of the season. Like things it just happened so quickly right away. Oh, my goodness. And poor Rudy Gobert. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to I'm going to take a stand right here, right now on this podcast that I feel like he is being railroaded oh, in the I press. I love Rudy. <laughs> that poor guy, like, he had no idea what was going on. And, like, in the whole microphone situation, like, everybody in that room thought it was hilarious at the time. Yep. And now everybody's, like, treating him like he's some kind of villain. Poor guy. And he's going to be – this is going to stick to his name for so long, which is unfortunate. Probably forever. Yeah. Yes. And so NBA's down. Mm -hmm. NHL followed this morning, Thursday morning. MLB follows. NCAA shuts down. All of college sports have now shut down for the spring summer seasons. So uh, we have a podcast here that talks about (laughs) sports, Sid. Uh, What do you want to do for the next four months? I mean, even just for the next 40 minutes, what are we going to do? I Oh, gosh. It's so bizarre. And I mean, as someone who has actively worked in sports for several several years and in this athletic department like just the most surreal series of events like it was okay we're not going to have it was basically the same series of events as the as March madness or mm-hmm. March sadness whatever you want to call it now Aww. um it was okay no fans and so then we're trying to figure out what that means for our partners and then it comes across oh actually we're just not going to do it anymore because the NCAA at that point canceled all championships. Mm -hmm. So you get to a point where it's like, okay, ultimately as a team and as an athletic department, you're playing for championships. That's, that's the ultimate goal always is to be playing for a championship. And if there's no championship to play for, then other teams are going to start dropping out. And if other teams start dropping out, then you have no one to play and you have nothing to play for. So it it just becomes this huge domino effect. And obviously the underlying, like, (laughs) The underlying point is that we're trying to keep people safe. Yes. For sure. There are sick people we want there to not be as many sick people as there would be if you had thousands of people mm-hmm. gathering for these large sporting events. Because here in America, this is what we get together for. This is right. what we travel across the entire dang country to do, mm-hmm. especially around this time of the year. It is sports. It is absolutely sports. And the governor came out and said, OK, no more than 100 people at a gathering. And I'm like, well, we are in the business of large gatherings. Yes. That is what we do. We sell tickets to you large gatherings. so you could get more yeah. if you have less than 100 people showing up to your sport game. It's a failure. <laughs> it's a massive failure. So, yeah. And really, I think the real losers in all of this um, are the players and especially our seniors. It, like, truly actively breaks my heart to think about – the guys who have worked so hard and have built a career. And I'm hoping that like maybe some of our, like our baseball athletes who haven't really have just like, they're just a fraction into their season. Mm-hmm. Like maybe they Conference get another play year of eligibility. Conference play starting actually right now. I was planning right. on being in this building <laughs> Thursday night because right. I was going to be broadcasting a baseball game. Uh, I had some free time on my schedule, yeah. so we invited you over to uh, talk about some stuff because, yeah, basically it was LMU. The series started here in Provo. This is the heart of your baseball season. Yeah. We don't get it. It's Yeah, it's really, it's really a bummer. Um, and- the most potent, as I'm just like watching things flow in during the course of the last 24 hours, the one that hit me the hardest is just the email we got here internally from Greg Rubel, the voice of the mm. Cougars that has been with this team for over 25 years and has ridden the highs and lows of this yeah. season specifically, oh, sitting gosh. on the sideline, just in his capacity as the director of broadcasting sports in mm-hmm. this building, needs to inform the folks that effective immediately yeah there's no more sports on campus and his final little paragraph the ncaa men's basketball tournament has been canceled byu men's basketball has concluded its season who that and that's where we sit now it's a dagger to the heart and you think about the teams that we have on campus this year that are having like historical success i mean our our men's volleyball team 
has maybe never been better. Just hit number one in the nation. Number one in the nation. After going to Hawaii, sweeping their first night, and then Crushed just them. heartbreak in the second night. They were up two sets to nothing, mm-hmm. um, and then a rough like third and fourth, but still, you do that in their home state of Hawaii. BYU prides itself on that Smith Field house and like the amount of fans we get. Hawaii volleyball is a bigger deal than basketball. That stadium was packed, and BYU still held their own. They come out number one in the nation, right? And then they don't get to play any more volleyball. Ugh! It kills me. It kills me to think of the potential that's left in this season. Like they're just for both volleyball and basketball. There was just so much that could have happened. And this just so seems much, so much what, different what from like the NBA, right? In yeah. in college sports things move very quickly and you get you get these teams like BYU that we love BYU. We're not Kansas Duke and and Kentucky. It's going to be there every single year. This is the BYU year, right? right? In the NBA, LeBron's Lakers are going to be fine next year too. It'll be another year older, it's fine. Like right. Uh, Gobert and Donovan Mitchell, they're both a little bit sick right now. They're young, healthy people. They'll, they'll be, be better in a couple yeah. months. And next year, they'll still be able to play basketball. But but in college, Ugh. that just turned over. Killer, man. And you don't get another shot at it. No, and we talked just last week about how much we were going to miss Yoli Childs and TJ Hawes and Jake Toulson and, like, I would never in a million years have imagined that we would only get one more game with those guys. And what a terrible game to have it be their last. Like, I can only imagine the unfinished, like, feeling that those guys have knowing that. I mean, the the locker room or the post-game press conference after that St. Mary's game was grim. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Those guys knew, like, hey, this is not who we are. This is not the team that we've come to know and love over the last few weeks, especially. And they knew it. And so Mark Pope patently took all of the responsibility on his shoulders. He understood what happened. And the vibe I got, and we talked earlier, like before Gonzaga in the regular season, which would you rather have the tournament or this one specifically? And it felt like BYU did need to get a loss in there to kind of turn things around. And now laser focus in you get some of your weaknesses exposed and now you're ready for the ncaa tournament this team has never been more ready after that humbling performance but we don't get to see where it was gonna go and i i did listen to mark pope i had the utmost confidence that this was going to be better in the long run than even if we had swept through the WCC tournament, had all the confidence in the world and just overwhelmed whatever regional we got in with all the fans and like at, at the height of WCC basketball, I was okay with that loss yeah. because it was going to make you better. But that loss ends up the being, yeah, the being the end it. of your season, being the the exclamation point <laughs> on such a, such an incredible season. Like, I can't – I just – I think about that Gonzaga win and how much it meant for this this town and these fans, yeah. and it's always going to have an asterisk next to it now, which just is insane. I can't think of a like a world event outside of – you know, we mentioned we were discussing briefly before we got on the air. Like outside of 9-11, I can't think of anything that has been more like widespread or – really more disheartening and just like crushing to people's emotional state impactful everywhere right like there are there are things and and tragedies that happen every single day that kind of get you caught up in things but it doesn't it doesn't seep everywhere into the consciousness we talk about sports here broadway has shut down disneyland has shut down any any you know those are two of my favorite things cole (laughs) Churches Literally across the nation. The, the Pope is trying to get ahead of things. You know, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has announced that they won't be out holding church meetings for At all. Any kind of the gathering. foreseeable future. Mm-hmm. And so this is getting everywhere. Right. It's so widespread. And, I mean, obviously, a tra- like, backtracking, I don't want to compare tragedies. It just, But to have something that affects your daily life so much. And in, in the long, like, scheme of things, like, sure, sports – is something we do for entertainment and something that we, you know, it has like, but I think it has a deeper cultural impact and we, it's something that bonds us that we do come together over. And 
especially for these athletes, like it's something that they work at every single day for, you know, hopefully they're hoping 40 years of their lives, you know, like they just keep that's that that is their whole their whole projection and momentum of where they want to be. And so it just it has such broad reaching impacts and wild 24 hours, Cole. It's been yes. it's been weird. <laughs> like it, like you say, the more stuff that goes on, the more it feels like time happened, right? Mm-hmm. A watch pot never boils because you're spending that thir- that thirty seconds to a minute just staring at it. And because we've had so much to do yeah. every second of the day, waiting for the next update, the next breaking news, the next now on Sports Center, it's just made time stretch out because we're waiting for what's the next big domino to fall. I feel kind of confident recording on Thursday because it feels like there's nothing else that could. Oh, fingers crossed. <laughs> be can- you go through. I have said, and I was looking forward on this podcast to talk about how fun the month of April is in sports. Mm. It is my favorite time of the entire year because we are out April. of winter. It's springtime. There's hope in the air once more. And you get to sit down and watch the Stanley Cup finals in the playoffs, the NBA say, playoffs. That's your final. Four and the the championship, like the culmination of March yeah. Madness, actually happens in April. The Masters are in April. The NFL draft is in April. Spring training and the start of the MLB regular season is in April. The only like April and October are the only two months where all four professional sports have something happening. Yeah, and and April's my favorite, followed shortly by October. And Ooh, there's, let's let's there's pray nothing. for a better October than this April, shall we? <laughs> we shall. So we're going to set coronavirus and COVID-19 and the reaction at that for the moment. And when we come back here on the Cougar Tailgate, we're going to take a look at that final game of the BYU regular season and see what it means going forward for next season in the Cougars in basketball, football, and beyond. That's coming up next. To the Cougar Tailgate. My name is Cole Wissinger, and right over there is Sydney Carlson. This is the part of the program where we would normally talk to uh, the opposing team that we're playing today, or, you know, maybe a player. Uh, I was thinking maybe we'd even just call a player up. You know, they don't have to come and shake hands or anything. Yeah. We just, but. We've got all the time in the world. They don't have class. They don't. <laughs> But they also have nothing to prepare for because yeah. sporting events across the universe have been canceled until further notice. That doesn't mean that they couldn't have done this, you know, slightly earlier for BYU's sake. There are some conference tournaments that didn't go to completion. BYU did. They had a game against St. Mary's. Again, to reiterate, it hasn't been five weeks or a week. <laughs> it has been, by the time Saturday comes around, five days. Six yes, days. Six days. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine. Where were you six days ago? <laughs> Not this. Oh, it feels like an eternity. We were living in a diff- on a different planet when that St. Mary's game happened. Not so a care in the world. It's our duty to at least mention what happened. Sure. In the St. Mary's game. If we must. 51 to 50, the final score. I would normally play a highlight right around here. <laughs> <laughs> but where would you find one, Cole? <laughs> Did not know where. There was there there was just this gloom above that game. Oh, gosh. Different from the gloom that's just above sports right now. In that even when we were up by, what, almost double digits at a couple points in time, it never felt good because BYU never got into a rhythm mm-hmm. the whole game. Absolutely. And in all, in like full disclosure, I didn't start watching till the second half. I had Aww. a previous engagement, but it was the latest game of all time. So I got home at like 10, 30, and the, there was still a whole half of basketball to the watch. The volleyball game that <laughs> we briefly mentioned from the previous weekend would contend for, for longest latest. game of all time. But three hours and, three hours and 12 minutes of oh. volleyball. Oh, when yeah, yeah. BYU almost closed it out in the third set, and then to have to go on a long third set and yeah. a long fourth set... And like an extra time in the fifth set. Normally, you just played a fifteen. They were, but yeah, um, yeah. It was just that so was a late. lot of. It was very late, and, and so, because it started in Hawaii, they did primetime Hawaii yeah. time. But yeah, also a very late game. 
Against. Yeah. So I came into the St. Mary's game and BYU had a like manageable lead, not a comfortable lead by any stretch. Um, but I, oh gosh, every, every time someone went up to the basket, it just felt painful. Like so many times Yoli would go up for a layup and I'd be like, oh yeah, got it. And it would bounce out off the rim. Mm-hmm. And it just, it it was just one of those, it sounds so cliche, but just one of those nights where like we couldn't make anything <laughs> and nothing was going our way. And like, it just kind of that whole rigmarole, but it, it was but true. But they really didn't. It, they didn't re- it was really true. I've That's... never seen this team shoot like that ever. Yeah. The roughest spot was about halfway through the second half where BYU goes three and a half minutes of game time, which in this game was 10, Painful. 12 <laughs> minutes of real time. <laughs> Without putting in a single basket, when you finally do, it's a free throw. Yeah. They, they didn't see something go in naturally off of an offensive play mm-hmm. for just the longest. And that sucks all the energy out. Yeah. This is a team that has been a team of runs because they get hot from three. And that's what's exciting. And that's what makes this team so dangerous going into a mm-hmm. tournament that now isn't going to happen. But but they couldn't, they couldn't even just get Yoli down low to have it. Just go in just slightly. It was just bounce. Yeah. Everything was bouncing all kinds of different ways. A really physical game, too. Like, so many players on the floor. A lot of, like, almost scuffles. <laughs> uh, Mark Pope himself, I think, almost got ooh, into a scuffle. Ooh. Mark was fired up. He <laughs> he got a, he got teed up. He did. Which, I'm going to be real, was surprised that that was maybe one of the first times we've seen that all year. Because I love Mark Pope, but he gets... Yes. He did. And he Gonzaga will let you well. hear about it. Yeah. Yeah. The refs have to put in your ear plugs if you're going to be on the side of Mark Pope for an extended period of time. Yeah. <laughs> well, if that would work mostly in our benefit than anybody else's. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no. The final field goal percentage looks very similar for both teams, but it's – I mean, BYU is a high-scoring team naturally, and yeah. so that went in the St. Mary's favor. They're both shot around 36%, but when you're a BYU team that is normally a little bit higher than that, then it hurts you. When you only score 50, but you're averaging 79.6 a game, yeah. round that on up to 80, and you scored 30 less than your season average in the most important game of the season to that point. Less than 60 combined points in the first half. Like, yeah. they, both teams were in the 20s at halftime. Crazy. Something we haven't seen all year from this team that has, you know, been a shooting team first and foremost and a fun team to watch because of it. And it was just like there was a lid on the rim, as they say. And and again, Coach Pope took a lot of the, the flack for it upon himself. Like, when he was talking, no one, I think, was particularly blaming he kind of got up ahead of that and you wonder how much of the advice was from him because Jake Toulson was one that needed to get hot we needed those extra points and he had a couple shots that he just passed out of like he he was right there where it should have been but they had a strategy that they were going to and it didn't adapt and so this is where sure it didn't work there but it seemed like it was gonna be be a learning point for them going forward. Like, this is how we should adapt mid-game. This is how we can be better. And we just don't get to see that come to fruition now. Right. And it was disheartening to then see St. Mary's go into Tuesday's championship oh, game gosh. and just get brutalized by Gonzaga. And that's not to say that the same wouldn't have happened to BYU, a grass greener situation. But, mm-hmm. like, I just – we talked earlier about – like missed potential and that's another one that I see like I would love to have seen what BYU could have done against Gonzaga and unfortunately several things this week have not gone the way of BYU basketball right (laughs) BYU would have been a little bit fresher too St. Mary's went into that Gonzaga game playing what three straight nights it would have or three St. Mary's had a double overtime game right double overtime Mm -hmm. game the night before they played yeah Saturday before they played BYU on Monday, mm-hmm. which I was hoping would work in our favor. but And it seemed like it did because you see some of their players that normally fits especially, right? Yeah, that's very true. He had such a heroic game in that the, mm-hmm. the game right before, and he fell back a little bit. Ford played, what, every single minute? Yeah. In oh that gosh. And he seemed like he was a little tired in the midpoint, but... 
both those guys figured out how to get some extra energy out of their bodies late in the BYU game, yeah. and that became the difference. Yeah, and you're right, because I, considering how poorly BYU was playing, it could have been a very different game. Like, I think St. Mary's was tired. I think they were, like, a little worn out from having played already in the tournament. Yep. Um, and, yeah, and you look at games that we've played in them in the past, and they have absolutely taken advantage of that. So I think we were a little more evenly matched because they were tired, and we came in not at our full our full capacity <laughs> for mm-hmm. whatever reason. We but, just yeah. were not playing all cylinders firing and... And that's the conclusion of BYU's season. They end not moving down too much in any of the major polls. You know, again, a a loss (laughs) against St. Mary's that close in a tournament on a neutral site. It's devastating because we had to watch the whole thing and it was a painful game to watch. But if you just, like, remove yourself and just say, oh, BYU lost to another tournament-bound team um, and it's a rivalry and it was one point. Big deal. They finish ninth in the net rankings 14th in the AP poll and that's kind of how it is we talk yeah. you know BYU just jumped to the top of the AP poll for men or I guess it's not AP but it's the poll the poll of men's volleyball mm-hmm. they're number one as the season concludes you can you hang up a banner uh, that with is a national championship if you want if Florida State <laughs> the Florida State ACC trophy presentation taught us anything today it's that BYU is a national champion that's national right. championship volleyball and team Kansas technically ends slightly ahead of Gonzaga Kansas is your number one team to end this college basketball season Feel free to take advantage of the fact that you don't have to play in March, Kansas, where you normally find a way to Good. ruin my bracket. <laughs> the regular they've been, uh, Kansas has been regular season champs of a lot of things without being able to put yep. it together in March. Oh, they are always. I never so. put I never I never have them going all the way. They're very good at ruining my bracket. Uh-huh. Yep. No need to worry about ruining a bracket this year. <laughs> They're all just empty. Ooh, what world are we living in, man? If they, everything feels weird. It's not it's not March if it's not I had plans. I I just moved into a new place. We had just we spent late last week putting up our two TVs. Mm-hmm. I was I was this close to getting my CBS all access like free trial so I'd be ready to stream all the different things. My buddy's got YouTube TV. Yeah. We were going to have both TVs going, flipping back and forth. And now well, we're not. I hear you. We, one of the great things about us having just moved into the stadium is we're in uh, one of our hosting spaces that have – we have eight TVs. Beautiful. Just just imagine the possibilities of a March Madness in a room with eight TVs. And then to have that taken away was just crushing among all of the other things that we lost. <laughs> and now if I get quarantined, I can't even stay home and watch sports, which is what – I assumed that I would be doing. <laughs> what two weeks? What are you, are you trying to, to do? Are you trying to announce something on the air, Cole? <laughs> I haven't been tested for anything. <laughs> I've had the sniffles for what seems like three months. Uh, and, and this is where it ends, dear listener. This is where it all comes crashing down. <laughs> we had pl- and we had plans of doing this podcast probably through April ish. Mm-hmm. Right there's still BYU sports happening. Baseball was going to get going. We wanted we had a to live cover. Show planned. Oh my gosh! Next week was going to be so fun (laughs) because noon is right in the middle of college, of of the second round of the madness. Mm -hmm. And we were going to just like bounce it off you, give you all the updates, have both TVs in the studios going on. Um, We don't have (laughs) any more sports to talk about. Um is right. (laughs) What else can you say? But... Well... The Cougarettes were about to go to like their national Oh, that's right. There's no way that that's happening still. Yeah. There's just no way. Everything's done. I mean, when, when, let's see, four Disney parks are shut down, that's when you know. As of now, as of of Thursday at 6.30 Mountain Time. Are there more Disney parks to be shut? There's two more that could potentially, somehow Paris has gotten away with not being shut down. Gosh, I thought France was worse than us. I absolutely think that they are, but Uh. for whatever reason, they're still going strong in in Disneyland Paris, and then Disney World is still open. What other gatherings are there out there that haven't been officially shut down? Like, what do people do? (laughs) 
I guess my outside gym, of sports, what are, what is what is there to live for? Is my gym still open? <laughs> like, if are there more than a hundred people that fit in that guy? Just ooh, like, that's a great question. Running on treadmills. Ooh, ooh, don't go to a and gym. Everyone, don't go to that's a gym. Dirty anyway. Yikes! Okay, I won't do that. If you do, take a tub of Clorox wipes and Everywhere. just wipe down every every surface you interact Instead with. Instead of shorts and a tank, I'll wear a hazmat suit, and that'll be fine. <laughs> just a, one giant Clorox wipe. Just wear, like, a jumpsuit. The steam room is, like, the best part, too, and then, like, Ooh, that's probably no. where the... <laughs> no, thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, what else do I do on a daily basis? Um, I come to work. Work's shutting down for a lot of people I, around the country. I know. I love shows. I so I've got some friends that are in Matilda at the Hill Center Theater in Orem right now. That's yeah. been canceled through the end of the month and into April. So that's that's heart wrenching for people that you spend months Practice. practicing and all that work. Is that the kind of thing that they can resume though? Like it looks like they're going to. So they, they sure. have, their plan is to pick it back up in April, like early April. But BYU's uh, drama department was doing Little Shop of Horrors and Little they just shop. shut it Little down. Little I think they maybe horrors. got one or two performances in. Bop, 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 that's bop. the one. That's the one. It's the plant eating the people. The people eating plants get. You gonna watch the? There's gonna be a Little Shop of Horrors movie. No, thank you. With Ryan. Absolutely no, Reynolds? thank you. Gosling. One of the Ryans is in it. I'm pretty sure you're thinking of a Chris Evans. Oh shoot. Yep. One of the Chris. <laughs> I don't think it. any of the Ryans are in it. Chris Evans. I've, oh, and I've is it Scar Jo? Scarlett that's also... Johansson, yeah. and then uh, Talon Ed Edgerton. No. Yes, the uh, Rocket Man guy. The Rocket Man guy. Mm -hmm. yep. Sure. Yeah, that sounds right. Those are the rumors. Movies are... have also just been entire like. Oh, the, the, the Hollywood theaters are is... technically open, but movies There's nothing are just playing. getting shoved yeah. on back. Good grief. I know fast. We, I saw Fast Nine. Is it nine? How many stupid F Fast in the F Nine is not <laughs> the title? But it's technically the tenth because they don't count Hobbs and Shaw, mm -hmm. a Fast and Furious mm -hmm. story that came out last year. Quiet Place and Bond, right? Those are the big ones. Oh, Bond pushed. went back to Thanksgiving. Yep. Yep. Trying to get that sweet, sweet uh, uh, Oscar for Billie Eilish. <laughs> New Mutants, which has been postponed for two years oh, already, no. just got postponed again. It was supposed to happen in early April. Oh. I'm an X Men. I'm a comic poor, book poor X -Men. guy. Favorite X Men? Go. <sighs> I mean, I mean, this is what happens when coronavirus de just <laughs> completely throws everything off. We are now Wolverine's the correct comics answer, but Shadowcat was the kind of like audience surrogate for so many of like the formative comic books that I read, right. and she was kind of the one that you got into it. She? And well, that, it's That's a Kitty Pride. It's Ellen Page in the movies. Juno, you know? Oh, the one that I... can walk through walls. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Shadowcat. I'm I'm a, an X Men movie consumer. I have not gotten into the comics, but okay. Shadowcat. I did not. You said that, and I was like, uh huh, yeah, sure. I'm Kitty Pride. So, and she gets, she ends up being in charge of the X Men later on. Like Kitty Pride and the X Men was a run somewhere in the, like the early two thousands or so. All right, yeah. all right, all right. What about you? So, <laughs> my favorite X Men is it Wolverine? Uh, I mean, Wolverine's there. Does Hugh Jackman can sing? I <laughs> about to be in. Well, maybe it's supposed to be in. Uh, Music Man on Broadway. We'll see. Who knows if anything uh, will happen? <laughs> I am I allowed to say Deadpool on this air? I love Ryan Reynolds. Why not? Yeah, <laughs> but he. I mean, if we learned anything from Deadpool too, is that he didn't get into the X Men. It's very true. He's on the outside it's looking. Very, in. very true. Um, I liked James Marsden in the X Men movie. <laughs> is this Another Cyclops? guy that can sing. Yes. Yeah. They, yeah well, you've got me. <laughs> that's, that's, my, that's my kryptonite. <laughs> No, that's DC Comics, Sydney. Let's oh my get, goodness. get it around. Uh, when we come back, we will talk about something else. <laughs> Who knows what it is? We're all be? going on this ride together. It's a journey. We're going to make some, some jello. This some is cool whip on there. I don't know. This what are we is doing? it for us, right? <laughs> we only have to figure out how to spend the next 15, 20 minutes with you on the air. There are sports shows that are airing every single day <laughs> that who knows what they're going to be doing. Bless them. <laughs> May the may the sports gods bless them with with uh, endurance. That oh they gosh! May. I mean, these four the four months that we're coming up on are dry normally. Right. It just got drier. So 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 full of nothing. It's an empty abyss as we look into the next four months of sports. And we will stare into the abyss with you when we come back <laughs> on Cougar Tailgate. <laughs> Welcome back 
back into the Cooper Tailgate. My name is Cole Bissinger, and joining me in the commiseration of the loss of sports today is Sydney Carlson. How's it going, Cole? You know, it's getting better. <laughs> We're able to laugh it off for now. We are certainly it's trying to. It's been a cathartic 40 minutes or so on the air so far, but... It's it's going to come around. And the bright news is that there's a light at the end of the tunnel in that this will probably be over sometime before fall and football starts. Let's uh, hope and pray. As, as I mentioned before, uh, this program, we were planning on kind of going through April. That's not looking like it's going to be the case because we rely on talking about who the Cougars play this week. Cougars yeah. won't play anyone until September the 3rd. And so we will – not be with you now we enter into our slumber our hiatus our hibernation of the summer until football time comes now the spring game was supposed to be kind of soon because it's spring i'm imagining that that's also canceled for the foreseeable future can't confirm which means now we just need to firmly say the next time that we will have football stuff to talk about is september and the cougar tailgate will be back at that point so hang out do what you do for the summer Go to the beach, enjoy being healthy. <laughs> I stay hope healthy. that everyone can say that <laughs> at some point. Try to avoid large gatherings. And, uh, <laughs> any more than, I, I mean, they're saying 100 people. 100 people. Avoid people in general. Yeah. That's the. Trust no one. Just... <laughs> avoid old people, avoid babies. I yeah. mean, we have a couple, one of my friends that I work with here, his wife is due like this week. Yep. Stay away. Stay home. Like, be protective. Everyone. But by the time September comes, we'll be back on the air, and we'll be talking about football, and we'll be talking about kind of a tough football schedule. Kind Uh, of. In lieu of any sports until this time, let's talk some football. All right. We look ahead. Starts Um, with Utah. Yes. As as I like. I like this new tradition. Of starting with Utah? Yes. I don't know. I'm not sure if I prefer it here or at the end as it was back in days of yore. I I will say it's nice to kind of go into it not knowing who the other team is necessarily. Sometimes when you have it at the end of the year. And if you have it at the end of the year and you feel like you're a pretty good team and you still lose to Utah, that's a bummer. But <laughs> when you have it at the beginning happening. of the year, like there's there's some like a competitive advantage to being able to go into that game with fresh eyes for both teams. and just... When you're the underdog, it behooves you to start the season yeah, with it that's because very true. you don't know where you're at. Most rivalry games do happen towards the end of the season, and right. that's where you're very established as a team. If we're going to steal one from the Utes, it's going to happen early. And it kind of it starts. It yeah. mean, That really tells you football's back. If it's BYU-Utah time, that means we're going. And things do not let up. After that in the schedule. No, it just it just keeps just keep, the hits just keep coming. You got Michigan State at home, which is nice. And Michigan State is one that is kind of hard to peg a little bit. Like they have years where they're top 10 and then years in where the Big Ten championship yep. and then sometimes not yep. so much. So it's hard. But I do remember um, a few years back when we played at Michigan State, not really working well in our favor. So, <laughs> yeah. And then after that, it's Herm Edwards and the Arizona State Sun Devils. He'll have that team ready. They've been on the rise. And then another Big Ten opponent that was rowing the boat in the right direction, especially last year, that's Minnesota yep. with P.J. Fleck coaching. Yes. And, uh, oh man, just you look at the different conferences that we're kind of spanning here. You got two the first four games, two Big Ten, two Pac-12s. No big deal. Um. And a couple Mountain West Conference opponents, another Pac-12 at the end. Like you're hitting some major, <laughs> some major mileage. All re- just just when you look at conferences, and some mm-hmm. of those teams within those conferences are the strongest that they have. Like you've got Boise State is easily the one of the strongest. I in mean, the Mountain West last Conference. year that was the strongest outside the Power Five. Right, and Utah State, State has become also a powerhouse in the Mountain West Conference, and you've got both of those on your schedule, Utah and Stanford, both powerhouses in the Pac-12. So, like, Mm -hmm. nothing about this schedule is, like, piece of cake. 
Houston, North Alabama, maybe. Houston normally at the top of the um, the American that's trying so hard to be a power sixth <laughs> conference. But yeah, you also get uh, Northern Illinois and North Alabama to kind of soften the blow. In the meantime, we have a lot of Friday games on the schedule this year. Interesting. How do you feel about that? I don't mind Friday games. Well, yeah, mm, mm, I don't know. I don't. I guess I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other. I don't love Thursday games. Thursday yeah. games are the ones that I'm not a fan of. Or like, isn't it Wednesday that the Mac normally ends up? Like, it's like Wednesday oh, or Thursday weird. that's Mac action. On Usually Mac our Thursday action. games have always been like a Boise State, but we get them on Friday this year. Yeah. I don't – one thing about Friday games is they're always late. And I, I'm i a big fan of like some afternoon Saturday games. I like playing under the lights from time to time, but especially as you get in later into the season, nobody wants to be playing at 8 o'clock it's in November. It's after daylight savings nobody. time and it's cold and it's dark. And I just want to go to sleep like, sometimes. F- like November 6th in Boise, Idaho at 8 o'clock, mm. nobody wants that. <laughs> and so no. that one I'm not super thrilled about. But like give me some sunlight to try and like counteract the winter. Boy, we have a cold schedule this year. Yeah. The yeah. away games at Utah, at Minnesota – San Diego State has to come here. We don't even get the break of going to California for a second. (laughs) Um, You do go to Stanford, but Northern California is just like perpetually 55 and miserable. It can be really cold, yeah. Well, you get the humidity and I mean, it's weirdly, sometimes it's colder in Northern California in like May than it is in November, but it can get cold. We went to the uh, Cal game a few years back and it was not the most pleasant experience. Um, Minneapolis, you'll probably be there early enough that it won't be so cold but it is a historically cold location um illinois illinois is cold yes i think you already mentioned that and yeah. houston another warm weather place you also i mean here. you also get honolulu and tempe arizona so do we get honolulu you know what no we do not that's i'm <laughs> i'm looking at the are you on to 2021 it, well it like has the last like six games from last year on here which is uh... so confusing there you go. No, we only get Tempe. I wouldn't mind going to Honolulu, just in general. Flights are like 10 bucks, right? <laughs> they're there paying, are worse they're places. paying you to go to Hawaii at this point. There are worse places to get quarantined. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, I have to work from home from I, you Honolulu? You know what? I'm not sure there are. What if the world ends and you're stuck in Hawaii, which is an island, and then like food supplies start running out? I mean, if the world's going to end, eh. <laughs> <laughs> It's Hawaii. Cole's ready. He's like, bring it on. <laughs> Sports are over. What do I have left? <laughs> That's right. Can I make it to September the 3rd is now the oh, no. the prescient question. Things have gotten grim in the studio, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> no, but uh, yeah. Cheap flights. Why not? It's because you'll probably get stuck there. It's probably... Yeah, I guess it's a bad idea. You've had better. You've had better ideas yeah. is all I'm saying. All right. Well, uh, football will happen. I'm going to speak it into existence. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Just careful. In case. No, oh. Let's hope it's not like the Spanish flu that like had a resurgence in September. Speaking of which, um, one of the jazz beat writers, right? Speaking of just like saying something that should be true. Oh, no. One of the jazz beat writers, every, before every game, he tweets out, it's starting. Like, it's game time. Let's go. Like, that's his tweet is, you know, the game is starting. Yeah. And freezing cold takes grabbed it because he tweeted, the game is starting. And then the game never started. Yeah. What a weird. That's the world that we live in where you can't even rely on game (laughs) time. No, and it happened multiple times today. There was a game that they stopped at halftime and they were like, oh, sorry, the whole tournament's canceled now. And that Florida State game, they came out pregame and just shut everything down like... There's, there's, there are no absolutes and no certainties in this in this brave new world that we've entered today. <laughs> yep, that's a good idea. Mention an apocalyptic novel from <laughs> <laughs> that brave new world in 1984. I have no idea which one is which, but I know that I read, or I was supposed to read both of them in high school, and that they're both about the end of the world or something. I read like neither a... of them. I didn't. I'm going to be honest. I did not know that I was referencing a. A book when I said Brave New World. That's where, that's where it comes from. The Brave New World is one of those, like, dystopian nightmare 
things written a long time ago. We're in the end game now. A movie! <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take one last break for Cuckoo Tailgate for this season. Come back and then sign off for, for a few months. We'll be right back. Back into the Cougar Tailgate. If you're trying to pin down when exactly on Thursday evening, Sydney and I are recording this in preparation for it to air on Saturday, because who knows if they'll even let me inside this building on Saturday. Uh, <laughs> a couple segments ago, Sydney said that there were still a couple Disney things that were still open. Breaking uh, news in real time. No, they're not. They are no. Well, as of Sunday, they were will all be closed. All Disney parks, cruise lines, all closed. It was. A couple days ago that you were still excited that this weekend... I was going to be in Disney World in less than 12 hours. And here we are now. (laughs) Nope. You'll be in your home not Uh, being sick. Not being sick. Stocking up on toilet paper and water. It's too late. Getting ready for... There's no toilet paper left on the face of the earth. (laughs) Turns out. I need to... I mean, I might have to go home to my parents in Pennsylvania just to make sure I have some because I know that they're prepared. (laughs) They've, they've got their supplies. They've got wheat and cans of everything to keep you safe for two years. At least a four-year supply of toilet paper. Make sure you guard that when you bring it back on the plane. It's worth cash. People will fight you for it, yeah. I'm sure they will. Well, this is all we have. There are no more sports. We're talking about toilet paper, and this is all we get. <laughs> toilet for the paper next, and X-Men, here we go. <laughs> the next four months. Cougar Tailgate will be back in September, though, when the sports return. Uh, this is the program where you can catch up on everything Cougar fan-related. Uh, if you want to get to know the opposing team from the mouth of the commentators, athletic directors, and and fans and people involved in those places, this is where you come. Uh, we let you know about the local food, the local flavor, uh, especially on the away games. There's a couple on the schedule this year that we didn't get to last year, especially on that football schedule we just broke down, that I'm excited to get to know what Minneapolis has. I've never been there. I've never been to Tempe, Arizona either. And so next season on Cougar Tailgate, we will allow the fans to have a look in to both sides of the game that we all love. And that's what we try to do with you every single week. We will miss you. Send me any parting words before we sign off. Everyone pray for football. Pray for football to return. It's going to be a dark few months, but we can get through it. We can get through it together. And if you ever get lonely, just go back and check out the podcast on BYUradio.org. Listen to some of the fun times we had over the course of this season and, and how the the world has changed uh, in, you know, just, I guess, the past couple days, but also uh, since football season. And enjoy the wonderful BYU basketball season that we did have before its untimely end this year. My name is Cole Wissinger, and right over there is Sydney Carlson. We're a production of BYU Radio, and one more time, go Cougs!